Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to do something slightly different this week. I uh, have a Bible study that I run at uh, Belvoir Street Baptist Church at Surrey Hills every Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. And this week's study was such a good study that I thought I'd share it all with you online. We're looking through the book of Zechariah, and we're up to chapter six of Zechariah. It's a spectacular book of the Bible, and it's been a great time of fellowship at that Wednesday night Bible study as we've looked through the eight tremendous visions that Zechariah had. And now we come to chapter six, and the title of this study is Behold the Man. So open your Bibles and turn with me to Zechariah chapter 6 and we're going to start reading from verse 9. Then the word of the Lord came to me, that is the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Receive the gift from the captives, from Heldai, from Tobijah and Jediah, who have come from Babylon, and go the same day and enter the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Take the silver and gold, make an elaborate crown, and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Then speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, Now, firstly, let me say, this is the true prophet of God. God told him that three men are going to turn up and they're going to have silver and gold, and they go, he even tells them whose house they're going to be at. And of course, all of those things are true because this man, Zechariah, is a true prophet of God. And he's told to say this, Behold the man whose name is the branch. From his place he shall branch out, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule on his throne. So he shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Now the elaborate crown shall be for a memorial in the temple of the Lord for Helen, Tobijah, Jedediah, and Hen, the son of Zephaniah. Even those from afar shall come and build the temple of the Lord. Then you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And this shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. So what we have here is a man named Joshua, who is the high priest. And Zechariah is told to go and crown this man with a crown. And of course, one thing you don't do is you don't put a crown on the high priest's head. You put a crown on the head of the king. But we have here a prophecy about the coming one. Behold the man whose name is the branch. And he is the one who's going to bring peace between these two positions, between the high priest and the king. As it says at the end of verse 13, and the council of peace shall be between them both. He's going to bring peace between the position of high priest and king. He's going to unify those two positions. Let's read and turn to our next passage of scripture. We journey all the way back to Genesis chapter 14 to begin to unwrap this incredible prophecy, this incredible mystery that's contained within the book of Zechariah. Genesis 14, reading from verse 18. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. This is a peculiar little story in passing mentioned in the book of Genesis. Abraham has just put together an army of over 300 men and gone and... Um, uh, retrieved his uh, near relative, Lot, who had been taken captive by a, a raiding party of kings from the north. And Abraham went and took his relative back from that raiding party. And when he came back, he runs into this interesting man 
called Melchizedek, a man whose name means uh, king of righteousness. And he was king of Salem. This is the first time in the Bible Jerusalem is mentioned. Salem is a shortened form of Jerusalem. So this king of righteousness is also king of Salem, which means king of peace. He's king of Jerusalem. And this Melchizedek brings out bread and wine. The two implements that we regularly use in worship, in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread, which spoke of his body broken, um, wine, which speaks of his blood shed for us. And here is this Melchizedek, centuries before the time of Christ, bringing out bread and wine. This is the first mention in the Bible of a priest, this priest who is Melchizedek, who's also king, the king priest of Jerusalem. And then we have three mentioned of God Most High or El Elyon. We see it in verse 18, verse 19 and verse 20, three mentions. Our triune God is mentioned three times. And this is the first time the term El Elyon is mentioned in the Bible. So first mention of Jerusalem, first mention of a priest, and first mention of the name El Elyon, God Most High. Very intriguing. And what happens, of course, is Abraham is blessed by Melchizedek. And then Abraham gives Melchizedek a tithe, a 10% of everything he'd taken in plunder from the kings of the north that he'd just uh, uh, overrun. Very interesting little passage of scripture. And we probably think nothing more of that passage of scripture. We might scratch our head a little bit, but uh, then the writer of the 110th Psalm puts these details into scripture. It's David who's writing this. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Now, of course, this is a very strange thing that's happening here. This is David recording a conversation between God the Father and God the Son, the first two persons of the Trinity. The Lord, that is God the Father, said to my Lord, that is to Jesus, sit at my right hand. Just hold on, Jesus. Wait until I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 3, your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Here's this mysterious man coming again. This king, who is also the priest, this king priest. Jesus is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. We're told here in Psalm 110. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. This is a terrible picture of the, the wrath and rage of God being poured out upon an evil humanity. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. Very intriguing. Very intriguing. Then we come to Hebrews 7 in the New Testament, where we also hear about Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. So we have this intriguing reference here to Melchizedek. He comes out of the pages of Scripture. We don't know his genealogy. It's not saying he literally has no beginning or end, but he comes out of nowhere and then we, he just vanishes. And he's likened unto the Son of God in that he remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment 
to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by the better. That is, it's saying Melchizedek is better, is greater than Abraham. Here mortal men receives tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who received tithes, paid, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Some very strange language here, but in effect what he's saying is the Levitical priesthood, in effect, are paying tithes through Abraham to Melchizedek, representing to us that this order of Melchizedek, this priesthood of Melchizedek, is above and superior to the order of the priesthood of the Levites. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, this higher order of Melchizedek, this one who was able to combine the priest, the position of priest, with the position of king. These two powers that had separation under the Levitical system, under the Aaronic system, under the Mosaic system, were going to be combined, these two positions, in the order of Melchizedek, when Messiah came, when Messiah came. Let's go on to our next passage of Scripture. Back to Zechariah 6, and I just want to repeat this passage here. Then speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, who is the one who's going to combine these two positions of priest and king. Behold the man whose name is the branch, the one who will branch out from the line of David, the root of Jesse. From his place he shall branch out, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. The Messiah is going to build the temple of the Lord. Now we know Jesus didn't do that at his first coming. But the Messiah, this branch, this man is going to build the temple of the Lord. And I believe it's the temple described and, and written out for us in the last eight chapters of Ezekiel. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule on his throne. He shall be a priest on his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. So this royal, mighty, prophesied, powerful one is going to come in all his full royalty and his kingship. But he's also going to come as the great high priest combining the two positions. A priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Behold the man. And of course, when we come to the New Testament, this statement, behold the man, is familiar to us. From John 19, we read, So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe, and they said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. This Messiah, this promised one, this one that all Jews had longed for, this one that all humanity had longed to come, the Deliverer, the Promised One, the Goel, arrived 
and sinful man did their worst. I believe they were goaded by satanic forces, by demonic forces at this point, putting a twisted crown of thorns on his head. This one named Jesus, their echoes back to the Zechariah passage we read from in chapter 6. The high priest there was named Joshua. It's the same name, Jesus. Joshua had a crown put on his head. Here they put a twisted crown of thorns upon his head, put a purple robe on him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews. Then Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Echoes of Zechariah 6. Behold the man wearing a crown and royal robes. But as a mocking display, those soldiers, those cruel men were mocking him. But some of the Jews would have seen the significance of this man wearing a crown named Jesus, named Yeshua. Behold the man, the branch, Satan doing his worst, Jesus remaining silent. He could have ended this horrifying time of violence being committed against him, but he opened not his mouth. He knew he had to endure this for us in order that we may have a way of redemption. But I tell you, we need to turn to Revelation 19 to see the full fulfilment of that Zechariah 6 prophecy. Behold the man. Yes, it was the same man that was being scourged and embarrassed and humbled before Pilate, with that crown of thorns upon his head. But now we read, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. Behold the man. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. Behold the man. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Behold the man. And on his head were many crowns. When you read back, in the Zechariah 6 passage, the crown that was put upon Joshua's head was a crown that's spoken of in both plural and singular form. And here the many crowns are upon the head of Jesus, the man. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. They mockingly put a robe on him after they beat him up 2,000 years earlier. But here... The blood that is dipped upon his robe is the blood of his enemies that he's just destroyed. And his name is called the Word of God. Behold the man. The armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. The God-man, the Messiah, the branch. Behold the man. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Behold the man. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. Behold the man, the branch, the king, the high priest, the God man. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Behold the man, the branch, the one who combined the two offices of high priest and king and will reign for all eternity. Amen.